Okay. Things seem to be working. I was struggling for a minute. Um, the uh, audio interface, I run an absurd number of audio interfaces on this thing. Um, right now there are, well, really, technically, um, every camera is an audio interface too, but um, as far as big interfaces, I run three. I run a... Um, Steinberg, a Focusrite, and a Line 6. Um, and they all do different things for me. But the uh, Focusrite decided to quit. And that's the one that drives this microphone. Um, that's all it does, is it takes input from the mic. And um, yeah, basically, I help them overload it with interfaces. Uh, yeah, no, that's basically about it. Um, so it quit. And so, but... Steinberg, Yamaha, um, they had recently issued a an update to their interface to allow you to use it for streaming. So it has um, now a third channel of outputs, which are virtual, which is pretty cool, that then lets you just send that to stream. So it's tricky... It's, um, so I'm using one of the, uh, the mic inputs on there, of which there are four, um, to drive this mic. And we're going to see how it goes. A good interface to use for reverb. Um... Are you talking about a plug-in for reverb? Guess I'm not sure how you're recording. Yeah, okay. Um cool. I like so let's play with that. Right? Why not? Um What reverbs do I have? Because this could be fun. to come with the DAW, uh, Reverb and Reverb 8. Um, then Neoverb is an isotope thing. We got the three that come with the Steinberg, the Yamaha interface, which are great. Um, these two neural DSPs are, they're actually amp models. Um, um, no, this is totally going to be fun. Um, and then I just got Universal Audio package of stuff and so let's play with that let's do a um capital chambers i've never loaded this in before okay oh yeah this is a chamber style reverb okay this is old school Pull in a preset. Um, yeah, so it's a it's a what I mean by a chamber reverb is that back in the day, what they used to do to get reverb is they would play back a recording into a chamber.
sure that I'm quite a bit louder than the music. Anyway, um... Oh. Okay. Equipment, have equipment everywhere. projects am I currently working on um there are two other classical pieces and one rock tune kind of beat and then I have probably about seven <laughs> to be honest I want to start working on some of your stuff too. Um, we'll probably do that pretty soon. Um, the biggest thing I'm working on right now is actually this room. So, uh, can you see it? Yeah, you can kind of see it in on, on the camera. Actually, I'll show you. Mm. Should do it. Yeah. Okay. So right here, there we go. And right here, you can see there are now things on the walls. Um, I've been working on sound treating the room as a mixing control room. Um, those are the only two you can see right now. Uh, there will also be a checkerboard array of, um, of panels. Um, not soundproofing, sound treatment. So, um, the difference is, you know, soundproofing makes it so that sound doesn't escape the room. The sound treatment or tuning makes it so that the reflections in the room, the, the echo, um, is kind of dampened. It's deadened. So um, what you can't see is behind the camera, there are uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten panels that they are set up there so that when I mix with my Yamaha monitors, um, the big, the speakers, I have HS eights, um, that it's not unbearably like bassy in the room. They are called literally called bass traps. They are four inch thick, uh, 
uh, some of them are two feet wide, some of them are one feet wide, one feet wide, one foot wide, and four, they're all four feet tall. And they're full of basically insulation. And they get rid of that base, that echoey or boomy, boominess in this room. So this, you know, it's a four, uh, 15 by 15 by eight and a half room um, that is just an echo chamber without this stuff. So the room already sounds better. Like I can, I can already hear the difference. Once I get the checkerboard array up, then it'll sound even better. And I can actually mix outside of headphones, which I prefer to do, um, without like, so what ends up happening is if you have a boomy room, too much bass in the room, you turn down the bass in your mix. And then when you print the mix and release it, it sounds thin. Like you've, you've, you overcompensate in getting rid of the frequencies you think are excessive. And then your recording sounds kind of, well, with no bass, too much boom in the room. That's about right. So, uh, yeah. Um, so Lenore, uh, we were listening, I was listening to it. I'm like, it's kind of too happy. So, I'm going to put a, we're going to tempo marker uh, 170. Back to 170 here. So, it it is good. It is good. It was a, a worthy spend. I'm still learning. So the, uh, yeah, there's a, there, there, it can be as complicated or as simple as you want it to be. I prefer to record and mix, um, as if I am at a performance, but I'm starting to lean. So with, with classical and, and cinematic compositions, um, that works, <clears throat> right? It works pretty well because you don't want to um, overdo the amount of effects that you put on things because everything, you'll lose a lot. But with rock, I'm like, I'm starting to move toward a, an approach that's more, uh, more modern. Um, and uh, yeah, so I have a lot to learn too. I love this. Yep. Yeah, so with reverb, I'm learning that too, where the best, like, it should be transparent. Like, you should notice it if you're listening for it. But if you're not listening for it, it shouldn't even register that you're hearing it. But it being there makes it better, right? So, like... Um, I've listened to, I'm listening to recordings now. There's one by, um, uh, Awaken I Am called Kin. The song is so good. Um, but there's like, if you listen, um, especially during the intro, um, 
there's a snare hit in the intro that um, has a ton of reverb on it. And it's a snare hit that's just like kind of out in the open because the, the guitars, the rhythm that they're playing, there's a gap in there in the rhythm for like that snare drum to smack. And um, there's a ton of reverb on it, but you don't really notice it. All you notice is that um, it's it sticks out like it's it's something special. But then you listen to the snare um, when it's mixed in with the rest of the instruments and that that reverb's not there so you can even use it in in that way to accent something special to give it a, just a little more oomph you know um that's very cool so like if you if you really get into the nitty-gritty of this stuff it can contribute just as much musically as any instrument um, it can also take away too. It can all like also really ruin a song. So, so you do have to be careful with that. Uh, with uh, um, reverb EQ, EQ can murder a tune, and uh, compression. The really are like the big three. Done well, um, they really enhance, but done poorly, like they just bleh. Because compression, you have too much compression, you just have, you have no dynamics, and you lose the transients, you lose all the punch, um, and then of course EQ, you can EQ things like all to hell, and so they don't sound natural anymore. So it's all about subtlety. Um, the other thing too that I've learned is the better the input, the better the outcome. So there's just some things that compression, EQ, reverb, delay, all your like standard effects just can't, they're not going to enhance a bad input, right? So like having a decent interface, having um, a decent microphone or two, you know, and they don't have to be expensive, um, but, you know, having some, some decent stuff does help. Um, you can make good sounding recordings with inexpensive gear. Um, but like, I would say, you know, don't go on Amazon and, and buy like a, a brand of interface that you've never heard of, you know, that kind of thing. Cause there's a lot of knockoff stuff out there and all that. But, um, and the same thing goes with microphones. I prefer like audio technica. I have a ton of those stuff. They're mics. Um, the Steinberg, which is Yamaha, has been great. But Focusrite makes the Scarlet series are very good in, uh, interfaces for cheap. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's my soapbox. I could probably talk gear like all day, but um, I should record something, right? That's why we're here. That's what they tell me. I wonder if this tempo is going to be too fast. Oh, man. Let's try it. <laughs> oh, that's too fast. <laughs> uh, a Shure MV7. Shure is a fantastic brand. Um, the MV version. Hold on. Uh, MV7. Oh, right on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you're talking about the, um, yeah. SM, the SM7B is the, it's the, the kind of, um, gold standard of, uh, of those mics, which, um, I have mixed feelings about that. I mean, I know lots of people use them they're great, uh, uh, broadcast mic. Um, they're good for recording vocals. Um, they're an honest representation of the, uh, of the singer. Um, they're good, you know, um, can do, I wish I had one probably should have one. <laughs> um, but, Again, I've had a lot of luck with the Audio Technica stuff, which is 
a ton cheaper. Um, I have two one inch, uh, diaphragm mics, condenser mics that I use. Um, one of them's over here inside of Folgers can. Um, and then this guy, uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, what is the other one? Uh, Yeah, I mean, then there's also like the good old Shure SM58s that everybody uses and they're a hundred bucks. And, um, you know, I follow a bunch of engineers on like TikTok and Twitter and whatnot. And the SM57 and the Beta 58 comes up all the time as like, you should have a, a couple of these in your arsenal. They record everything well from kick drums to vocals. So... Um, it also is dependent on your voice too, you know, different mics for different vocal styles for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really, I don't know. I'm not like a huge, uh, advocate of like any one particular thing. Like some people swear by stuff. I, I don't, um, I think it's just whatever you can make work. And I've had decent luck with what I've got. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to take this. Uh, the plugins. Yeah. So on that, I don't know what your budget is. <laughs> um, I tend towards subscriptions. So, for example, this... Um, Sound City Studios plugin that we just like the reverb we just threw in there. I pay um, UA uh, U Universal Audio a hundred dollars a year to gain access to their basically their entire library of plugins. It's everything you probably ever need ever. Um, at what I think is a fairly reasonable price. It's, it was a discount. It was on sale. I think it might actually be a hundred and was it 120 a year, but this is a year. So even if it's like 150, you're still only talking about like $12 and 50 cents a month. And that gets you everything. And I will tell you their plugins are not cheap. If you just buy them outright, so that's what I do. I do that with, um, isotope. Um, uh, Oh, if, um, if you want, there's, there's free ones out there. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, look around a little bit and I'll send you a message, uh, with some links. There's some decent, um, decent sounding. And by decent, I mean, good sounding reverbs and EQs and compressors. Um, out there so let me look around I'll, and i'll i'll hook you up see what i can find yeah no it's <laughs> I, I love doing this stuff so um let's bring this down to i'm gonna cheat bring it down to 140 see if i can record my part that i wrote mm -hmm. Money in football? What? Mm something out of that let's play with that bring it in <laughs> fat fingers on lots of this stuff
You know, I'm gonna just play this again because I despise what I just heard. I can do better. about playing my own music. Can I get this when I'm trying to record it? That was a lot. Okay, that's the, that's the part. That was disappointing how hard that was for me to play. <clears throat> when I've been, I've been playing it on my piano 
up in my living room for like two weeks. This is the part of, yeah, well, first, do that. into it. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see here. Make it. Have you gross? All right, you know what? There we I feel like we're missing something there. Cause we're doing a step down kind of thing. Actually, <clears throat> I have uh, picked up a picked up a cold from my younger son. Well, actually, probably from my wife. Probably from Jess. Yeah, it, it is. My, my kids definitely have it. But of course, kids bounce back from things and things just don't affect them like adults. So...
<laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, the stomach thing going on Friday was. You know, hit this. I'm sorry to hear that too. Now I want to hear. All right, I got to get rid of these markers. We'll play around with it later. Okay, I'm gonna take, this is tough. Complete rearrangement of this piece of music.
Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. Cool. Do some sort of a I can't remember what I did. What's going on? It has, has been almost a year. <coughs> we'll fix that. Faded Asian, what's going on? I'm making music for Magic the Gathering now. Well, for myself, but not for Wizards. That would be super cool. <laughs> I might be young. 
Okay. But business is good. Life is good. Um, getting started writing again, which is super cool. Um, I have a goal this year to actually write songs. Um, I'm traditionally a composer. Lyrics have never really been my strong suit. But I'm going to give it a try. I'm doing some collaborations. Um, Actually, uh, I'm going to start working with uh, Angel in Disguise there um, is a songwriter and she and I are going to start working on some things, um, which I'm super excited about. And overall, just living life. We moved. Um, so uh, the studio is obviously behind me is super different because uh, it's a different house. Um, so. Um, so that. That's been awesome. It's take you know, we're still kind of like, they say you're not really done moving. Like it takes like a year to get settled in <clears throat> and it's not, it's not wrong. Um, and, but you know, got a little cold, so that's a bummer, but that is the nature of the, beast with kids um and uh oh yeah yeah um it's a lot um moving it doesn't matter like if you're moving cities well moving cities is a lot tougher i'm not i was gonna say it doesn't matter if you're moving cities or not it does <laughs> let's be honest it, it really totally does um uh and yeah it's a lot. How how's life for you? I've seen yeah, I've seen you in forever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I get that. It's been forever since I've done anything retail, as for certain. I'm... Um, Still doing the software engineering thing. Whoops. Sorry. 
Sorry, I keep having a mute to cough. I don't feel like coughing in anybody's ear today. Oops. That that's true. I did do um, many many years ago. I pulled uh, pulled cable like uh, Ethernet and phone, um, and uh, it uh yeah definitely um, definitely does keep you in shape. this part the aches and pains that's the truth regardless man I am feeling that <laughs> it's more of a percussion instrument really um, okay so we Did I do it twice? Hmm, I did do it twice and I corrected two of them. I'll take the second one. They're the same thing over and over again, but there's a finality. Come by and saying hello. Um, uh, yeah, so um, I'm trying to push the YouTube channel a little bit. So um, I think it's in socials. Um, if you if you could go over to if you're not already uh, subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do. Um, my plan is to put a lot more stuff there. Um, and this is a concrete plan that I have now. I know I've said that in the past, but like now that I have this space and things are getting put together, I'm actually planning on spending, uh, next week, uh, doing YouTube stuff. So we'll talk more about that later, but, um, yeah, please do. If you're not already, that would be awesome. Good night, though. Get some rest. things going in here I like that idea I like that a lot um, and welcome um, yeah I've been meaning to do something about the space to uh, the studio itself um, 
and and just a walkthrough of how it's all put together um the different things i use um the from this you know software the interfaces all that good stuff so um i live stream that i might also throw that together as a youtube video as well but thank you um tan 20 um appreciate it and thanks for the follow um let's see sound. This is not wrong. And I'm disappointed in myself too, because, um, I'm not wearing any slippers right now. Just socks. Just got the socks. Feet are a little cold. Not going to lie. Introduce a second theme to the mix. Major motif, baby. Let's see where we go with this. I can't remember what's next. humidified um give it I'm, I think I'm gonna do that we're gonna take this back.
Okay. <laughs> this is so much fun. <laughs> What uh what region of the world are you located in, uh Tan? I don't ask specifics, I'm just curious about just generally where you're at. Cool. figure. I <laughs> just mashed two two keys. tilt of the earth as it relates to locations in the northern hemisphere you know mm -hmm. 
we're gonna do Disappointing. You're going to see me uh, searching for uh, plugins, interfaces. Um, uh, well, if we're on Amazon, it's been uh, cell phone mounts, tracking mounts, stuff like that. <clears throat> Let's see. I wonder if we want to do something like this. Oh yeah. can fix that and then So, Tayan, you might not know what this piece is about. Um, it is a... I'm writing musical themes. This is super geeky. Musical themes for um, Magic the Gathering Commander cards. So I recently started playing. Didn't play when I was younger. 
um, when it was super popular. That was like, that's when I was in high school. Um, but my a younger brother got me into it and, um, I, uh, I approach things musically. So like I'm really attached to some commanders and, uh, this is actually one of my wife's favorites. Her name is Lenore. She's a witch and she's, th she throws parties and I wanted to write something that was, uh, that conjured the image of, um, a ball, a giant party. Um, and what better way to do that than a waltz? Um, I don't know if that, that we're going to do any exotic instruments for this piece, Sven. Um, the next one I'm doing, the next commander, her name is Willow Dusk, and she, she's also a witch, but she's a bog witch. <laughs> she's out in the wilderness witch. Um, and um, so that's going to probably be pretty wild. So um, let's get some some strings here. What are we doing? Hopefully it didn't just crash. Everything good? All right. <laughs> hey, uh, everybody, this is my wife. Um, she will think is, uh, is Jess. So say hello. There we go. by chocolate where and how do I get it because yeah why did you end up there ah Okay. Uh, trim it up. <laughs> Hit the right buttons. All right, now we do some things. It's worth it. That's too harsh. Um, I wonder if there's a way. Hold on.
Yeah. Um. I'd be just taking out. Um. This is the tough part. It's not even the range of the instrument. Getting rid of Cool. Gangsta grass is cool. <laughs> uh, nor am I, nor am I. Um, because in this set of instruments that I'm using, <clears throat> it's from East West Audio. Um, well, they have the, obviously the full range of the voice of each of the instruments. So we got our bass, cellos, violas, violin two, and violin one parts. And if I leave them layered with all of those notes in each one of the uh, the tracks, you're going to end up with a lot of doubling up of parts, which will create kind of an overwhelming feel to it. 
Um, and I'm not, I'm not ready for a, like a big crescendo in the piece yet. Um, so I separated those out. So I basically made sure that only the instrument, like <clears throat> the each instrument and each voice is only playing one note at a time, which would also be consistent with how you'd expect it to be played by an orchestra. You know, obviously not going to be playing a whole bunch of chords on, on these instruments. So, um, And I, I like to think like that because I used to play violin, still play a little bit, but I was in an orchestra, and so it's really orchestral music is the sum of all the parts, right? <laughs> you leave me alone, Sven. <laughs> I tend to write long pieces of music. Okay, now... Things are going to get wacky, and I hope I don't crash the computer. I made an extra track here that's got nothing in it. Whoops. That has nothing in it. Bye-bye. And take all our strings. Put them in a group. And, whoops. Gonna be our winds. I want to bring in an oboe. And the browser database. Uh, no libraries. Um, Hollywood. Orchestral woodwinds. I give it an input. Cool. So
There's my part. Okay, let's get larger. <laughs> well, I'm definitely not the 16 to 25 demographic either, um, but we do what we can. you know um yeah um i don't know how my kid will react to it i'm gonna put this on a loop interesting way Thought I heard them. All right, let's see.
can do better. I can do better than what I'm trying to do. It's not loud at all.
something was wrong here. Here we go. Cool, okay.
this is horrible, but we'll fix it. Chopping up here. Okay, we need to do something about some of this stuff is not... What's that?
I'm completely lost now in chat. <laughs> We just hear that. critically listen in a little bit probably not tonight but you're right there's probably some anomalies and such that need some straightening out would not shock me road trip confectionery treat um I'm like more of like the salty not a personal thing. <laughs> like I'm, I'm not salty, but like I'm a salty snack guy on on road trips. Things got ugly. I'm going to do... Just 
gonna be cool. What do we got going on here? Those are pretty, pretty meaty. wonder
for the follow. I did not study composition. I um, have been a musician for pretty much my entire life um, and play several instruments, um, including um, guitar, bass guitar, upright bass, violin, stuff with strings and keys, piano, organ, stuff like that. Um, and I've always been interested in writing. Um, and so I've written a lot of music throughout my life, uh, mostly instrumental music. Um, but I've also been in, in bands and um, stuff like that. Hey, thank you so much. Um, it's fun. I mean, you know, um, I'm judging by your name that you are also a musician. Um, and you know how it is, you know how much fun this can be.
now getting somewhere. Oh, let's see. short notes. Yeah, um, yes, <laughs> and that is a fantastic idea um, that I will do. I will take your advice because it is good. I think that's gonna be me heading back to the acoustic piano though. Um. I need a counter, yeah, counterpoint. Let's see what happens.
thing is for the undo button and in uh, non-destructive editing. I think I say this during every stream. Like, so glad. <laughs> We'll see. What might be the trick is... That was a little harsh. Ooh, it's late. <laughs> tradition <clears throat> I want to play this all the way through and just take a listen to it I want to turn the mic off uh, so hopefully I don't interrupt the uh, the listening but uh, yeah this is the new arrangement with a new theme from for Lenore Autumn Sovereign
I think that's the arrangement. I think that's pretty good. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Alien, you're making some really, really cool suggestions. Um, I didn't, didn't think of a trumpet, um, but that's not could be that could be really good. Um, we're not done with this yet. It, there's got to be there's going to be more stuff. Um, I feel that there there could be a part. I might actually try maybe not a trumpet but a French horn. Um. But yeah, no, there's there's still potential here. Um, I think this definitely passes um, arrangement-wise, um, feel-wise, um, and yeah, I think I think it's got, I think it's pretty much there. Um, we're gonna come back to it. I want the trill. Um, that was so. This this um, theme, this piece of music is. Um, the commander. So if you, if, in case you missed it, um, this piece of music is inspired by magic, the gathering, uh, we play, my wife and I play and my brothers and, and, and all that. Um, and I decided to write a piece of music, uh, that's inspired by the different, the different characters in magic. And Lenore autumn sovereign is a witch that throws this festival, this party that is the, um, kind of marking the changing of seasons, the, the light to the dark, stuff like that. And thus, that's why there is uh, the, the major and minor interplay back and forth, uh, Alien, that you noticed. Um, that's why I do that is because I'm like, I'm trying to balance out the major and minor feel because it's like a hopeful thing, but there's darkness. It's very cool. Um, so that's the... Uh, um, that's the mechanic that's going on there. Um, but yeah, so, uh, the, yeah, the, uh, the trill <laughs> Mozart doing thumbs up for the trill. Lots of those. If you're going to play harpsichord, you got to do that. It's just, it's a rule. You have to follow it. I don't make the rules. That's just the way it is. Um, so yeah. Um, so that's it for me for tonight. Um, I want to thank you guys for hanging out alien and Tayan. Um, thank you, um, uh, for the follows, um, check out ornaments. Um, um, uh, squaw squaw. If you, uh, Oh, Oh yeah. Yeah. Doing, um, little grace notey type things. Um, that, that would be good. It's pretty mechanical right now. So it might actually be good to go back and like go over the, the harpsichord parts, um, and, and detail them. Um, yeah. Squaw, squaw, send me, um, uh, if you find me on Twitter, I think you can send me a DM there and, uh, yeah, I'd love to hear it. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's real late. So unfortunately I'm going to have to say good night, but I want to thank you all for hanging out, listening. Um, if you get a chance to check out the, um, the YouTube channel, I'm going to be doing a lot more there and, uh, and here I'll be back Friday here, Friday night, probably doing some rock stuff. Um, kind of want to start doing a cover. So I might do that on Friday. Um, it'll be things with guitars. It'll be fun. Um, so come back hang out. Um, we have a good time here and, uh, yeah, hope you guys have a great night or a great day, depending on where you are. Um, take care of yourselves, everybody around you and, um, yeah, have a great night. Thank you all.